Yes, it's Megan. And um, the screen's gonna look a little bit different today because typically we have side-by-side -side, um, uh, cameras going uh, because we were doing these um, at a distance. But I'm fortunate enough to have my pal, Teddy Carl here. And um, I, by the way, I'm just lucky to have Teddy Carl in my life. Let's just say that. <laughs> um, so Teddy, um, you might know as, are you Teddy K2, Teddy Carl 2? Um, are you on Instagram? at Teddy Carl too. At Teddy Carl too. So Teddy Carl is a prolific uh, belt needle pointer. And pillows. He, and he's done a ton of pillows, um, but he is also our um, in-house exclusive pillow finisher. And so what we decided to do today is to talk about all things needlepoint pillow finishing. But what I'll do first, because I forgot, because this is a total difference in um, the way we're doing this, is that I need to introduce the podcast. So I am Megan Holmes, and I am here at um, the Needlepoint Clubhouse, which is my shop. And um, I'm also known as STL Needlepoint on Instagram. And together with my pal, Melissa McLeod, uh, who owns The Wool and the Floss outside of Detroit, Michigan, we do the Pointing It Out podcast. And um, like I said, here we are. This episode will be all about pillow finishing. And um, excuse the kind of funny camera angles. I've also got some kind of funny thing going on with my face. So this is just going to be a totally <laughs> exciting experience. But um, so we're here. And Teddy, why don't you tell us, um, not only is Teddy my pal and our pillow finisher, but he also has um, his own well, my full-time full, job, full -time job. <laughs> I'm an interior designer at The Great Cover-Up in Ladue. Um, I am the lead designer or principal designer, and um, so that's what I do during the day. And not only that, he also didn't mention, so The Great Cover-Up is also a gift shop, and so Teddy does most of the buying mm -hmm. and um, all of the decorating, and it's a really great shop if you're ever in St. Louis. Um, and for those of you who are in St. Louis, I hope you've already found The Great Cover-Up. So, mm -hmm. um, But what Teddy does for us is he visits us, I don't know, twice a month usually. At least. Um, yeah. And he and I sit down, we talk about all the pillows that have been um, turned in for finishing. And we, um, we basically, it's kind of this team effort to go through the, the form that we've received from the customer. So any of the requests that we get. And then um, Teddy is of course, has an excellent eye for design and color and texture. And so we kind of talk about how should these pillows be done. Um, but there is kind of a, I guess a, a common set of language. Well, just a language, sure, that goes mm -hmm. along with the pillows. And it's really sort of hard, unless you're in it all the time, to remember that language. So we thought um, maybe it would be a good idea to kind of go through some finishes and just kind of talk about the way these pillows were finished, what they're called, um, and kind of ideas of ways to finish needlepoint mm -hmm. pillows, right? Mm -hmm. So the first one we have right here up front um, is honestly, so this is mine. So I love it. Um, but this is one of my, um, and I, we're, we're exactly, not exactly sure how all these camera angles are going to go. So just bear with us. But um, so Teddy, tell us what this, what you would call this. Okay. So when I get the form, um, it would, it would indicate that the pillow is inset which means it has this frame made out of fabric that actually extends the size of the needlepoint. People will bring in, you know, this needlepoint is probably 12 or 14 inches square. And, you know, that's not a very big pillow in the scheme of things. So I like to do a two and a half to three inch border at a minimum, because what it does is it keeps your needlepoint on top of the pillow, because otherwise you get this really funky, Kind of, um, kind of scrunch and you lose a lot of the detail of the pillow um, because of what it has to do to kind of wrap around the insert. Um, this also has an inner contrast welt. If it were made of the same fabric, it would be called a self welt, but because it's made of the, the navy gingham, it's a contrast welt. So these are the things that I would be reading on the yellow form that I get from the Needlepoint Clubhouse that the customer and the work, the, the employee here would fill out. Um, and you can certainly dictate anything you like. Um, we've gotten to a point where more than half of the pillows that we get now are finishers choice because people are kind of trusting our judgment a little bit more, Scary which enough. makes it kind of fun, <laughs> you know. Um, and it just, you know, this, this is probably a good example to show because sure this was done and not um 
the fabric was not picked out yet right. when the pillow was made. So we had the canvas and then pulled. So this, of course, you recognize as a Kimberly Ann piece. And then we happened to have this fabric that we thought was just so much fun. And all of the colors just sort of sung with the piece. And um, so Teddy and I looked at that and said, oh my gosh, wouldn't that be great? Mm -hmm. um, it says finisher's choice. It says we can do inset. Um, and so, um, so we did, and the and the customer mm -hmm. is pleased. The customer mm -hmm. is one of my employees, so I know she's extra pleased. But um, <laughs> the difference between the one we just showed, um, which was had the inner welting, um, this one does not have a welting. If you'll notice, this is just what do you call this? Just fabric frame. It's just a, an inset. Just without the the inner, um, I would just call it inset because without adding the inside self welt or contrast welt it's just like this um what's nice is this canvas actually sort of has its own border the way that it's stitched right. so it really didn't need that extra detail something else to remember with that extra detail is that depending on how thick it is megan's um pink pig pillow um it's a it's a small welt but it still covers easily two rows of needlepoint because right. it sits in on the pillow. Right. Um, you can't really have it sitting over unstitched canvas. So I have to stitch it so that it's covering the canvas. So it's fine if you have a real simple background or something, but when, you know, if you've got a small piece, which we, we do right in front, if you want to okay. hold that one up, yeah. um, you know, to add an inner welt to that one would be taking away from the stitched piece you know you when it's only four and a half inches square right. two rolls all the way around the edge certainly takes away from the look of the pillow right and so teddy we get questions all the time about turn rows mm -hmm. and so in your world turn rows obviously are on pillows mostly inset um tell us i think i know what the standard answer is but mm -hmm. tell me if, if someone says to you do I need turn rows on my piece? What no, would you say? No. Okay. As a matter of fact, turn rows often makes it more difficult to finish. I can stitch right up to the needle point. Okay. Unless you have a self welt, then that has to go on first. So the one thing I would say to somebody in this particular case is that if you really are worried about the the fabric kind of leading or, or edging right against your needle mm -hmm. point, then add a row or two. You could but add a row, or in show. this case, it might have been pretty. You could have added just a border of maybe the darkest navy blue and add two or three rows around the edge, just so that it has its own little frame already, right. okay. um, so that it doesn't feel like it needs a, a self welt or a contrast welt. The only other thing that I, I don't know if we have an example because I didn't think about it until just now, but so for example, if you were doing some kind of an elaborate stitch, um, and I don't have, like I said, I don't have a great example, but if you were doing a stitch that really had a repeat so that it would look kind of weird if it ended right at the edge, mm -hmm. I sometimes tell people, um, in fact, a pillow that I just stitched, which was the plum stitchery, um, the eeny meeny miny mo guy, mm -hmm. I did um, a, an open background and I made sure it was kind of a, it was an over two, I think, and so it created these squares. And I didn't really want the edge to end at, in the middle of one of those squares. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I mentioned Purposely to you that I, would like for, I stitched it all the way out again so that then the fabric would go right up to the edge of that stitch. Mm -hmm. But um, for the most part, we don't need turn rows. Right. Um, turn rows just add bulk in mm -hmm. the seam and yep. it just kind of becomes a problem. So Also sometimes unless you specifically say um, there are three turn rows or there are two turn rows, it's not always easy for me to decipher what is a turn row and what is actually part of the stitching. So if I make the executive decision to cover those turn rows and you had painstakingly taken extra hours to put those that as a border, then you're not going to be happy with me or Megan and <laughs> I'm not going to be happy with you when I have to remake you it. Do it. So That's right. <laughs> I feel like, um, you know, the more specific you can be, again, you really don't need the turn rows, but, um, you know, turn rows are for things, ornaments and things like that, where you're actually rolling yeah, it over belt, or a belt where seam. you see the edge of the belt. Exactly. Um, but no, on the pillow, you're fine without the turn rows. So two things really quick that I think we kind of glossed over. But so on the other pillow, we said that was a contrast welt. And that's because the um, it, it had a been a self welt fabric. if we had used the pink, mm -hmm. right? So this is a self welt because the fabric is the welting. Mm -hmm. This is neither. This one is actually 
actually a rope trim. Uh, it's a cord, a cord with lip. A, cor a lip mm -hmm. cord. So here I have a piece of it with oh. that's not in a pillow yet. So it just shows you a pre-made cording that's attached to a flange that I can then stitch into the um, edge of the pillow so that it, um, and I get it nice and close so you don't, you don't see that braiding. Right, that's the um, that disappears in the seam. Right. Um, but we do have people, this is great, Teddy, he's one step ahead of me. I didn't know he brought these. Um, <laughs> well, and it's a lot more stable than hand prick stitching a, 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 red, a, a custom made little right. cording around the edge. So we <clears> do, so a lot of people um, will supply their own materials and mm -hmm. we are for the most part just fine with yes. that. Yep. Um, so long as it's the right kind of fabric and we'll mm -hmm. let you know if mm -hmm. for some reason it doesn't work. But um, the point is if you are looking to do uh, your own lip cord and you have this or you found this, um, it, ensure that it does have this um, flange, is mm -hmm. that the, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so that it can, be, it can be sewn into the seam. But the other thing is make sure you have enough because mm -hmm. there's actually more than what you think um, used on these pillows, especially well, when there's an inset. Correct? Let me point out where this one, this one is joined right here. And I'll be pat myself on the back just you a little bit. See it. You can't tell because Whoa. what I have to do is tear a little of this off and I actually unwrap mm -hmm. about two inches of it or an inch and a half and I actually overlap it so that it marries into itself, and then you don't see where the join is. Wow, nice um, work. I did not know that. That's <laughs> so a lot. that you know that in itself is just another four inches in addition to what the the um, the, di the, the, the circumference of the pillow. Correct. Is. Um, the other thing that you kind of just pointed or mentioned, I guess, that um, I am really kind of I, against. I guess is the right word to say. Um, a twist, a hand applied twist cord. Um, I personally do have a pillow that was um, bequeathed to me that I, it was someone else's and it has a hand tied and it's just, it's coming apart. Um, it, it's kind of the older, I guess, more traditional mm -hmm. standard way to finish a needlepoint pillow was to mm -hmm. use that twist cord, but it just isn't gonna last, well, stand the test of time. Well, and just the way that it's stitched on isn't as stable right. for the long run, you know? Right. So eventually it'll start coming off at the corners and if you actually use it, to rest on or to lean against it'll Not start big, getting right? kind of tattered looking i know <laughs> that day my daughter plopped down on you know my uh brand new my easter bunny pillow that i had just finished and, oh my gosh you know yes it happens but <laughs> so anyway suffice it to say that we um here we kind of um talk about durability a lot and so we often or i would say most times are using a tapestry or a, um excuse oh. me a uh what am I trying to say? A, uh, just a decorator weight fabric as you. opposed to a broadcloth or a like a quilting cotton. cotton or something because that just in the scheme of things, you see the lumpiness of the pillow, you see where the cording, you know, maybe there where the cording is joined, you're going to see it because that fabric is thinner. If you're contrast welting, maybe with a gingham under a solid, you might see the shadow of that gingham underneath because the fabric is thin enough. Um, just keep that in mind. You know, obviously velvet is a good choice. Lin a nice linen is a good choice. Um, I am fortunate to have scraps and and I have a stash Acquired, that uh, just over the years that where I pick, you know, two yards of this, three yards of that, so that I, I have this wonderful collection of things. And I've tried to bring Megan little little yeah, shards nice. of it so that we can choose from that as we're um, talking about finishing. Um, but the, the heavier weight, something that your your sofa pillows would be made out of, or your bedroom pillows, something that is sort of decorator weight yep. as opposed to upholstery. That's the word upholstery I was trying to weight upholstery weight or decorator weight. weight. Sorry. Now that being said, there are certain things. And that um, brings us to this, another point. This is um, this is a sheared or a ruched cording, um, which is delightful. Um, not my favorite, but not because it doesn't look nice, but because it's we uh, all have it's, our opinions. We right? all yes, <laughs> um, it's it's hard to do, and this in particular because of the weight of the fabric that Megan and I chose to put on the pillow, it made it a little more difficult. If this were a lighter weight fabric, it would have been much easier. And so back to that upholstery weight. So this is an upholstery weight fabric. Mm -hmm. We 
probably could it's, have or should. It's, it's a drapery weight fabric. Just Can you use it for upholstery? Yes, but okay. it's not as heavy as a velvet or a tapestry okay. or a chenille or something like okay. that. So we could have, and maybe perhaps should have, chosen a um, contrast welt mm -hmm. to do the ruched well, she right? requested it oh, in the same the fabric. Same. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. So, uh, you know, it's, so it works. It looks you know, great. a Liberty of London fabric. Sometimes, too, it's about the quality of the fabric as opposed to, you know, a broadcloth is four ninety five dollars a yard. You know, you spent $10,000 to make the yeah, canvas. That's right. That's right. You know, now what? you're going to spend $12.50 on the fabric. Right. You know, right. let's be realistic. Use something nice quality, a Liberty of London. Um, some of the spoon flower fabrics that are done um, that, um, can be poplin. on a poplin or a, a linen weight. Um, a lot of the linens are just beautiful. I love this one because it has a really great weave to it, a texture. Yeah, it's I um, think maybe you can catch that, but um, this is a It almost nice. looks like it's got a needle point quality yeah, to it, sure it or does. something. Yeah, like but, a woven, uh -huh. some kind of woven, yeah. Um, and again, um, oh, sorry, I was thinking while you were talking. Mm -hmm. Something, so back to, because I just, I think that this is an important point, that, um, so we often get the question when someone brings it in, they say, well, should I do a inset or not? Mm -hmm. And I always say, Teddy always says yes. And he alluded to this at the very beginning, but, and I'm not sure that I can really give, but, so Teddy makes, um, how often, probably 98 to 99% of the time, you are making a custom down insert. Is that mm -hmm. right? Well, 50% so, of the time, because you, I, the there are a lot right. of okay. sizes okay. that are available. So. so we use down here. Feather and down. Feather and down, mm -hmm. for the most part. With Unless you pillows. request Degron. Exactly, okay. Or so, if it's a tiny little um, ring bearer pillow oh, you that you can't make it. a feather insert for. If it's big enough, I can, I can even on a seven by seven or an eight by eight, I can do a, a feather insert. Um, I use downproof ticking, um, and you had mentioned the open weave canvas. Yeah. I do it in white or ivory or cream so that if if there's a view through kind of a situation, sure. you don't have to worry about lining it. Sometimes people will say, I want to line it in blue or green. Well, that doesn't make any difference, but to have it be white so that it doesn't show through to the insert or, gotcha. um, you know, you don't want all that work you did, you don't want it to look like you forgot to stitch half of the pillow. Right, right, right. So, so I'm sorry. So I overspoke. So about half the time he's making um, uh, a, custom a custom shape or size. Yeah. Uh, insert. But um, my point is that we, for the most part, use down. So when you, people will say, well, this is so squishy, you know, why is it so squishy? Well, the beauty of a down feather pillow is that in a second, if you fluff it, mm -hmm. it all grows yep. back to where yep. it's supposed to grow. Mm -hmm. But the point is, when it's sitting like this, imagine if that this uh, two inches here was needlepoint, you would have lost, you know, the last word. Right. <laughs> it would have said living well is the, <laughs> the best. <laughs> the best. <laughs> Yay. Which it is. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. But anyway, the, um, so the question, what I was trying to get to is that the question is often, um, should I do an insert? And we always say, almost always yes, unless you really don't want that pillow any larger. And um, But it, it's just a really good idea to do a fabric insert. And it's also, when, say, when you think about the loft of the pillow or the crowning is what they call it, the, um, you know, how much you actually lose, you know, this is a 12 by 16 inch pillow. And it's not all that big, you know. I, I think people imagine twelve inches by sixteen inches flat, and don't think about it wrapping around the pillow. Right. So you have to factor that in, or you end up with a very small pillow. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, um, so I kind of want you to bring this guy over to the point of inset. So then people say to me, "How large should should the inset be?" And Teddy likes to go big or go home. <laughs> and so uh, when he made this pillow for himself, which is an absolute stunner in person, so Teddy stitched this. I think this is a JP. It's Renaissance. Oh, a Renaissance piece. Thank you. Um, so I have the matching Frankenstein first, that's not ah, done one yet. One of these days will do Frankenstein's yeah. match. Um, 
But anyway, so this is a pretty large inset, really. And mm -hmm. I think it's because the scale works with a larger inset. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, you would say that the inner, the inset would be two to three inches. Is Usually that... three inches is my favorite. This might be, what is this, maybe four? Or maybe it's four total. Yeah, it, it, to me, it appears to be at least three or four, but I'm bad at that sometimes. So. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing he did was add these amazing embellishments to this. And so this is all hand applied, right? So these are buttons. The buttons, yeah. And then these are pieces from the, the trim. Yes. That this, yep. Yeah. I took so this a is few all tassels off. He did the tassels on um, each. I mean, so this is what I would say happens when our customer says, I just want Teddy to go crazy. So Teddy is so good. <laughs> now, I will say if this had been a Teddy go crazy, there probably would have been some kind of print on the front and another print on the back because I just with love... so much going on on the patchwork of his cape. I wanted the finish to be relatively simple, but I, I love the detail. I think that little extra row of the orange pom poms and the little the three extra tassels hanging from the buttons. Um, mm, guys, this is stitched so you beautifully. Know, I wish you it's... could see all this. It just, to me, there was enough going on on the pillow itself. Um, I had so much fun using Angora on the pants and, you know, I used a lot of new stitches and this is after I had quoted to somebody, I only stitch in wool <laughs> <laughs> and I only like basket weave. Yeah, well, I did that too. Not so it, much it, anymore. <laughs> it, it's pretty easy to get your mind changed once you see all the options. But mm -hmm. so this is a, an inner micro um, pom pom welt. Um, and so you can use a small trim if it works. Mm -hmm. or, um, or a little cord, a little self or, welt or contrast welt. Yep. Um, and then this is obviously a specialty um, trim. Now, again, this is absolutely gorgeous. Now that's, that's My Ulez guess is that and it probably at retail, um, that was a piece it. that I had that was probably $285 a yard. For the trim. Um, for the trim, but. So, we don't stock that stuff. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I have, um, I have. We sometimes have access to gobs of it. Parts so. or Teddy has mm -hmm. gotten an, like a, an overstock or there's something. So we are able to use some really nice trims and, and fabrics. Um, but I know that Melissa oftentimes, um, they had a, uh, I think a calico corner or something nearby them. And you can go into one of these high mm -hmm. end um, designer places and choose a matching Cord or you know they'll have all the samples on a, in a book or something. Mm -hmm. I'm including mm -hmm. at the great cover up, but mm -hmm. I know um, that uh, Melissa's pillow finisher also goes and you know finds kind of the perfect thing sometimes. So it's it's kind of amazing when when you can just find. Well, the, and I can perfect. always do that, but you have to realize. I mean, people now we've started. I used some on a few pillows, and people have kind of gotten excited about brush fringe, and it's wonderful. Um, and some of the hobby shops and fabric stores locally will have some, but it's not the best quality. It's usually real shiny. You know, it's not terribly expensive. I try to find it on eBay and here and there. And I have hordes of it that I've just inherited or collected, gotten at a clearance price or something. But this one I picked because I love the colors that were in the canvas and the linen. And I mean, this is probably $25 a yard, which this is two yards on the pillow. Some people are willing to spend that extra $50 to get just the right brush fringe on right. the pillow. So we're happy to do that. You know, this collection has probably 20 colors or 25 color combinations. Um, so we can certainly do that. Um, so um, to that point, I think I, I don't. I only know kind of the operation at Melissa at the Woman Plus and here at our, at our shop. But I do know that a lot of local needlepoint shops have a finisher that does pillows, obviously. Um, and so what we do here, and I, um, and I'm sure it's what most local needlepoint shops do, is we kind of have a baseline price. Um, and so we can say to you that our inset pillow is about this much, and this is as much of a deposit as we'll take. After that, if you ask us to sass it up with fancy stuff. Um, or the exact color or, velvet or the exact color linen. Um, 
Or if we, if you say to us, I really want blue to match this pillow, um, and we are, we don't have it, we don't have any access to it, we found it online or we sourced it in some way, um, it's, what we typically do at our shop is we'll give you a call and say, hey, look, we found the perfect blue. It's gonna cost you X amount more than the price to, to actually have us finish the pillow. Um, are you comfortable with that? If not, we have a different, we could use, a, you know, a navy or a brown or a tan or, you know, whatever. So mm -hmm. we're, we work really hard to communicate with our customers in that way. Um, and I know that, um, I know for sure Melissa's shop does too. I know that a lot of shop owners have um, people that they work with. So my guess is that that's how most shops work. Mm -hmm. um, it is a little difficult for us to give you an exact, exact estimate on those kinds of things. Depends on how much fabric, how much trim, what we can find, mm -hmm. where, what type of it, you know, et cetera. But um, I know that people call us a lot and they say, how much is this going to cost? And mm -hmm. like I said, we have a pretty good idea now, a pretty good baseline range, yeah. of, um, of what the labor costs, what the materials costs. And so, um, so that comes up a lot too. So I just wanted to mention that. And so I think if you're curious or you're worried about the cost of your, um, you're finishing, you should call your shop or give us a mm -hmm. call and say, this is the size of my canvas. This is the type I'm thinking. And we mm -hmm. can get pretty close to what we estimate yeah. to be the price of, of the mm -hmm. finishing on your pillow. Just remember too, if you're looking for an exact color, um, that may then be something that has to be ordered. Um, it may longer. be something that Megan <laughs> has to take a photo of it to one of the local stores, or I'm taking it to one of the local stores, which may not be this afternoon, and it might add a little bit of time. You all have been stitching like maniacs, so <laughs> I feel like I can't get my head above water, but I'm, I'm trying to at least stay not too too far behind and and really um, quick i think i want to i want to kind of tease that out a little bit because we have been talking a lot about these finishers and the pressure that they're under um and you know teddy does this as i guess i would sort of call it a side hustle this is not his <laughs> he's got a family he has a wife and kids and he's got a rich social life well it's well, becoming it's more rich now, COVID now. Is, and um and uh you know he, he he's an interior designer and he runs a store and so he is not um he is not 100% focused. Yeah. And and I would say that in my experience, m many finishers are not because it's not a sustainable um, full-time job necessarily. Um, so the point is that we try very hard to get things back to you in a timely manner. But we had, was it a couple of weeks ago we counted? I think we had 56 pillows or something mm -hmm. in the queue. Mm -hmm. Teddy shows up pops open his trunk and I think there were 20 pillows in the trunk, 18, 19, 20 18, pillows in the yeah. trunk. And I mean, my jaw dropped. And, you know, I think we have to, we, we, first of all, thank you for taking this job on because it's a lot of responsibility to take someone's beautiful work, but also you have to kind of be in the mood, right? I mean, this well, is an art, a craft, it's and, and thought provoking, that, it's time out of your brain. To Megan's point, a lot of times I physically cannot work only by date. Right. Um, sometimes I have to be in the right mindset for an inset with an inside welt and an outside welt. And, you know, that's a lot of different cutting. And, you know, some days yeah. I can just do some blocking for a while. And some days I might sew on five insets. And then I might, ha you know, I might have four pillows ready and then I make some inserts. Um, but it, it does kind of go in phases. Sometimes I will take a pillow and I will work from start to finish. Yep. And other times I'll maybe put the frame on it and set it aside and maybe wait to be absolutely inspired by what that cording might be or what that brush fringe might be. Sometimes I'll go into the store to look you know, do I have a brush fringe that's the perfect color or so that slows me down. If I have everything that kind of keeps the floodgates going. But if anything makes me hesitate, um, my mm -hmm. wife, Karen, and my daughter, Victoria, are amazing helps. Sometimes I question myself yeah. and they'll come down and say, don't be stupid, it's perfect, you know, and, or <laughs> yeah. something like that. But um, it's just nice to have a second opinion when you're making somebody else's. <laughs> well, what else is sort of fun about that is that we're all, um, you know, Karen has a different eye, Victoria is, 20, 19. 19. Mm -hmm. Okay. So she has a kind of a different, like spunky eye. And so, mm -hmm. um, a lot goes into this and we don't just, we don't take it, um, you know, we take it seriously. We take a lot of time and effort. Mm -hmm. So that's why, uh, um, this stuff takes a long time. Mm -hmm. Well, so. I mean, I, I like to view it as this is your, it's a work of art. Yeah. This is something, I mean, if you painted it 
I mean, if you painted a painting, it wouldn't take as long as stitching this pillow did. So I feel like it needs to be honored and it needs to be treated properly. Um, I also, as a designer, just like I appreciate artwork for the artwork. I would never choose a painting because it matches the sofa or because it matches the window treatments. You choose a painting because you love it, which I also think is why you choose a canvas because you love it and it's going to be fun to work on. Um, you That's know. funny, you segue very nicely. What I, I think what you're trying to say is finish a pillow for the pillow. Don't exactly. always finish the pillow Make for the your pillow for a wonderful home. piece because if it matches itself and it looks amazing all by itself, I don't care where you put it. It's going to be beautiful and so you might move it around. This is actually a perfect example. Um, Teddy's home, I've been, it's beautiful. Um, but this is not, this is a little more rustic than what I'm used to you. A little bit. At, but, but, it's, but it's, it's the most beautiful it's trim for Nantuckety this pillow. And, and well, Teddy's also from the East Coast, and mm -hmm. so this is very him. But my, my point is that this is a, what did you call this? Jute. Jute. Sorry, mm -hmm. I, I, I was going to say burlap, but it was not right. <laughs> Same material. <laughs> so, anyway, um, but so this is another um, type of finish. So in other words, this, what would you call this? It's like a flat well, ribbon trim? Is that it, it is. It's a flat braid or a flat ribbon trim. Um, the nice, this pillow, if you notice, is not mitered on the corners. So you ah. don't have the 45 degree seam on the corners. I, I stitched a piece on each side and then um, overlapped in kind of like a tic-tac-toe detail where they, one, one overlaps the other. Um, just because I liked the trim and I wanted to show a little Whoops, more sorry. of it. Sorry. Um, that was so. our microphone. Don't worry, no one was harmed. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so this is yet a different type of detail. And again, um, you know, if you have the perfect trim that you want to use, or you've seen something, or you have a picture, that's another thing. If you see a picture of something online mm -hmm. or in a magazine, and you say, "I love how this was constructed," mm -hmm. or "I like these colors," we mm -hmm. love that because mm -hmm. our mind's eye is not in your head. No, um, everyone's mind's eye. The sees more you can different. tell us, the more you can, the more insight you can give us. Um, I just realized the better. Put little gold beads in the bed. Look how beautiful that is! Oh my gosh! I I'm that. actually searching for the the ivory um, closure to oh, stitch right on top. Here. Oh my gosh! Okay, if anybody has a source, let us know. <laughs> Teddy's looking for an ivory piece. An ivory, uh, yeah, what, the bone. The, the bone um, what is that? I don't know. The, the closure. The closure, the closure, the, 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 yeah. the pin, I oh, think. Okay, the pin. okay, all right. Um, but anyway, so this is yet another example. And this to me is, is so well suited to the piece. So this mm -hmm. was really finished for the needlepoint piece. And I mm -hmm. will tell you, from experience, this is not finished for Teddy's living room. It is finished. No, really it's more. well, it's and it's my family room is a little bit more New Englandy with yes. with yes. some um, whales and things like that. So the Nantucket basket worked real well. Um, so actually, good tie into this next. Okay, but really quick, oh, I want right. to show one more. Sorry, sorry, but you guys, of course, you know me. I don't really do a great job rehearsing this stuff. So poor Teddy, he's just <laughs> along for the ride. But this is another flat ribbon trim. But instead of it going the way that other one did, as you called it, like a tiptoe or a crisscross mm -hmm. pattern here, um, this is just inset with a ribbon, which I really like this finish too. Mm -hmm. I don't think we do this as much. Maybe because we just haven't really sourced the ribbon, but um, mm -hmm. this is beautiful. Well, we had done that one with the Gucci stripe ribbon, oh, and yes. then we did one with a polka dot ribbon, and then we sometimes I'll put a bow on the bottom. So the one um, that we had a flat was bow. like, and, and so, and that came out of this guy's brain. I mean, no, the, <laughs> I didn't come up with it. The, the stitcher didn't come up with it. He just said, oh, that would be very Gucci to put this bow. It was very cool. So um, again, give us what you love. Do you love, you know, because, you just never know what might happen. And I will say, if you've got the stomach for it, just say finisher's choice because you never know. Okay, mm -hmm. Say finisher's choice, but I don't like blue or finisher's mm -hmm. choice, but I want no pink. No ruffles, or no, no yes. not too girly, not too, um, as you can tell, Megan and I both like gingham a lot. So gingham shows <laughs> up by Megan, accident. <laughs> um, but sure, absolutely. If, if Finisher's choice with some exceptions is great. Um, just some guidance to know what direction you're heading or it's on a navy blue sofa in a room with a Persian yes, carpet. Any too. any insight you can give us for that sort of thing um, or you wanna keep it black and white or you wanna keep it um, just all blue or something like that. Anything that we can hear that makes it 
just a little easier to right. kind of narrow it down. The last thing I want to do is spend the time to do this and charge you to do this and to have you not like it. That's We've right. only had a couple of, of remakes that were that were just kind of one of them I know was it just was it was not as big as she thought it she was. thought it was going to be. Um, you one know, we just, did recently. Um, well, oh. our well, we, there's been two. Well, then there's kind of yours. <laughs> I should go get mine just for the, but maybe I'll make a picture of it. So, I had something in my head, and then Teddy did exactly what I told him to. And this is what another customer said: "You did exactly what I told you to do, but it looks terrible. It yeah, was a bad idea." Yeah, but I idea. don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, true. So I had these. And with Finisher's choice, I can say I gave her what she wanted, not what she asked. For. And that's exactly right. So. Um, but anyway, so we digress because that's what we do best. That's what but, we do. Um, so we, I think we had a couple of other examples here. And I think what I you just, wanted to explain. I just wanted to show, um, you know, we talked about brush fringe. This is, you know, you can, the brush fringe has this little kind of stitched edge that gets, that gets buried into the needle point. So we have to think about if we're doing a needle point pillow, and we're doing brush fringe, and then you pick a really heavy backing fabric, that's that's one of those things that it gets really kind of thick and bulky. So um, just keep in mind what's going in. Um, but there are all different kinds of brush fringe. We, yeah, we had shown you the cording. So do you have to like pull this out? To the make secondary. It so where the three lines are, that's part of that's what holds the fringe together. There is a, a release. This is just to keep it neat and tidy while I sew so, it. And then when the pillow is done, you release it by pulling the chain stitch and, and it, it all, just like, unravels out. and then you fluff it out. Very cool. Um, this, is, this is a self welt or a contrast welt. And it's just kind of like that other piece was where the lip is attached to the cording that we just make a cording around a filler you know, um, a couple things on this because mm -hmm. so this can be different sizes. To yes, to a certain extent. Like very small. I mean, I'm only um, saying. Like, this is this is my average. Okay. Um, I have one that's a little bit larger than that, and then the one that we used for the ruched cording. Oh, I was thinking um, the inside, the the smaller. Oh, the, yeah, we can go inside. much smaller yeah, as yeah, yeah. well. I have some real thin ones. Um, but something. So first of all, like I was just saying, so this there are a couple of different sizes. We don't usually. Um, have you request what size? Teddy's just good at using scale. I, and I try to proportion it yeah. for the pillow. Um, but the other thing is, if you say to us that you are providing your own fabric and you want to have a welt of some kind, so this is sewn on the bias. Correct? It is cut on the bias. So this uh, cut and then okay, it, it takes it takes a lot, a lot more, more fabric, fabric than you think it does. Um, at a minimum, it, if you're going to do either a bias welt or a pleated ruffle or something at minimum by a yard of fabric. Um, if you're doing a ruffle and you want it really nice and full or really wide, um, get two. Um, I'd rather give you a little bit back than to run short or to not have enough and have to disappoint you and say, I could only make it an inch and a half or I could only, you know, I couldn't right. cut the cording on the right. bias. The cord doesn't have to be cut on the bias, but it actually makes the corners smoother okay. when you do that. Um, when it's not cut on the bias, you end up with a, a very distinct kind of almost like a fold on the corner that isn't as attractive. So I think the other example and the thing that takes also a lot of fabric yes. are ruffles mm -hmm. and pleated. Well, I did, I did, I had a sample of this is a this would end up being finished at a one and a half or one and one and a quarter inch pleated ruffle. This is showing you a stripe and it's showing you this is cut on the straight grain of the fabric. Oh, okay. um, and I did that because I did this plaid because it's more fun and interesting. I cut it on the bias. And so, um, kind of and actually on what I used that one for, I did the bias welt in addition to that. Oh. So I had the extra layer. And if you do a pleated ruffle or a ruffle, we can do the little cording or the little welting inside as well, if now, you want both. The other thing some people ask about is the ruffle, because ruffles are back and it's killing Teddy. 
<laughs> well, it just, you know, it just takes so much longer. So, you know, when so you factor in 50 pillows and now each one is going to take this much longer, <laughs> it just bumps the end of the line back. And, you know, I'm trying to keep up. I'm I know, trying. I know. But um, so some people might say, like, can they give you a, like, can they say, like, I want an extra wide ruffle mm -hmm. or I want to, so how do But how does when that... you look at fabric, keep in mind, this is folded. So this is one and a quarter inches, but I had to cut it two and a half to get it that wide. So again, it just takes a lot it of It just extra takes fabric. more fabric than you think. The other thing is, and I ran into this today with that one, um, the Budapest pillow. Oh, we didn't bring it up. Okay. Well, it's okay. Anyway, the, the border that I was making the inset with had a repeat. So uh, I couldn't just randomly cut five inch strips of fabric. Uh -huh. I had to make sure I had the same green going all the way around. So I had to skip a section to be able to cut that same. And that happens a lot with plaids and or patterns checks, or checks, right? Yeah. Um, and I don't know that we have a good example, but you'll say, oh, I'm going to need more fabric than that because Teddy does a really nice job. Well, this is a good example of, of lining these fabrics up at the mitered edge so that it doesn't look goofy when they come together. Um, we don't have a good plaid, but Sometimes it makes my head hurt thinking about how he has to like cut that and make sure that it well, looks good. And you can't corners. always make it match perfectly. So don't ever think, and especially one thing to consider too, on an oblong pillow, if it's, oh. if it's rectangular, um, it might be great on the top. When you make a square pillow, each side is identical. So the, that little, that corner, whether the stripe is going out or whether it's framing, it's gonna match beautifully. When it's a rectangular, if you've got the stripe going perpendicular to the needle point, um, now it's not going to match up at this corner the same way that it would if it were a square. I mean, that's just simple geometry, but mm -hmm. you think you forget that how that works when you're mm -hmm. doing a pillow. And mm -hmm. I was on a thread on, on Facebook or something and somebody said, oh, that's not lined up properly. And I said, Teddy, what do you think about this? And he's like, well, of course it's not, it can't be. It can't but be. the person yeah. who did that did a gorgeous job because what they did was mitered it so that the, it was, I forget exactly what it was, but do you remember that conversation and however the, they did it? The did issue is job. when there's a stripe or a plaid or anything like that, I have to make sure that I have the exact center of the canvas and I center one stripe on the middle of the canvas. So right. even if with the spacing of the stripe, it doesn't do exactly what you might want it to do on the corner, at least it'll do the same thing on both corners so that it looks consistent. I don't, I won't do a stripe or a plaid just random. Um, so even though it doesn't technically match, because I'm a big one, I won't buy a plaid shirt if that side seam doesn't line up. Like but by the same token on the pillows, if they're all the same, yeah. it's not as offensive. And, you know, I think that um, the point here is that we have to let these people do their jobs people who have been doing this for a really long time. And so if we dictate too much, um, it, it's just not going to be quite right. Like, you know, you might think you have an idea of how you want something, but really all of us needlepoint shops hire professionals to do the work for you. And we just kind of have to take their advice and, and learn from them. And, you know, when you say, well, I think I gave you plenty of fabric. And it's like, well, but, you know, we had to do a ruche or we had to do a whatever. Or, or there was a what? pattern involved and we couldn't cut it the way And you, I'm not going to say could. that this ever happens because Teddy is close to perfect. But every once in a while you make a mistake, mm -hmm. you know. Um, we had a finisher the other day say, oh, my gosh, I am so sorry. I cut your ultra suede a hair too short and mm -hmm. I don't have enough. And mm -hmm. we're all human. This is all mm -hmm. a hand craft. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, oh, and chances are we'll be able to use that piece for something else, else later. That's exactly yeah. right. But the point is that, and that um, takes time. Mm -hmm. It takes exactly. a professional Matt, eye. Gotta go back. I gotta go back and get more. <laughs> I've got to, you know, I mean, these are all things that just take time. And so um, I, 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 I'm sorry to belabor the point, but these are, it's just that everybody wants everything quickly. And, and this is just not a, a really fast process. So, um, well, and COVID so has my, not been, it's been the needlepoint shop's friend, but it hasn't the been the finisher's nightmare. Friend. So I hope that this performs well for camera because one of my my boys is still here. But this is what happened when you when you tell Teddy what to do and you don't. Um, <laughs> you get I, I sent Teddy a picture and I go so I guess I got a pippy long stocking pillow bag because <laughs> I said I wanted this right. I wanted cord I wanted <laughs> and cord. So he's like, uh, well, I thought that's what you wanted, but yep, it looks pretty weird. So anyway, we're gonna we're gonna do a little. We'll do a re redo of this, but um, <laughs> the point is, don't.
don't be like me and try to act like you know what you're doing. Um, let them do it. <laughs> but anyway, that's my pillow that I just got back. And but stay tuned; it'll be a little. Um, we'll we'll less show you the stocking. yeah. We'll show you the update. Um, last thing I think, but who knows? Because you know we like to go down uh, different roads here. But the last thing that Teddy and I have been talking a lot about, because we stand in the back and we stand, we take send pictures back and forth, and we work so hard to make your canvases look right with the fabric and we you know um, and we've been talking a lot about wouldn't it be kind of cool to have to suggest to people to maybe at least kind of think about what kind of fabric you might be interested in mm -hmm. using and not everybody has a plan for their canvas when they start stitching it but if you know for certain that you're uh, stitching a pillow that you're going to put in x room and you know that it should be lively or whatever it is and you maybe it's a good idea to think about well or maybe it matches the chair or the drapes or right you know it's a fabric you've already used in the room so we did this just for a sample so this is a, a canvas that we have here in the shop and we found this fabric that we think would be super super fun with it the repeat is pretty large but this could have a great big inset and it would be great but if you can tell and I, again i don't know how this is really showing on the screen but um there really isn't any tangerine this tangerine color this turquoise isn't in the pillow um the blue isn't quite the same and so our suggestion is to maybe find threads that you can use to change the colors up to go with the fabric or to go with the room. Um, so it's just an idea that these are some threads that we pulled that really go nicely with this fabric. And it would be a really, really quick color swap to even give this pillow, you know, this tangerine border or um, I don't change know, the flower color, change the flower <laughs> color, exactly. Or the background. Um, this color isn't anywhere in here, but maybe you do that or um, change the letters to be that color or, um, you know, instead of doing blue, do this turquoise that's really in that fabric. And um, so I don't know, is there any, any other point you want to make about No, that? I just think as, as a designer, it's nice if I have a client that needle points, I would often suggest, well, why don't you stitch something for the, for the room? And it might be nice if we knew exactly what fabric we wanted to finish the pillow with so that you can tweak the colors to make it really go together and so that you're not fighting with the canvas yeah. to make it work in the room. It's funny when somebody will send us something and they'll say, um, you know, like choose either of the two blues that I've stitched in the canvas. Mm -hmm. And we just fight to find either one. Exactly. You just, know, you know, it's, it's kind of like a paint swatch. There's almost unlimited needlepoint threads, but right. you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that, um, you know, the, the, the world of you know pan, Pantone and and the world of color has decided that that exact turquoise is one of this year's colors and we're going to make it in fabric. That's right. Um, you know, fabric is limited. Just like I'll say to a client, I don't want you to come with a paint swatch, or the last thing you want to do is pick your wall color first, because there are millions of paint colors. We can paint your wall any color in the world, but once we know what the fabrics are, that's easy. But yeah. if you start with a paint color, you know, now you're walking in and you've got to have that paint color match the fabric that you're using. Right. So. Or if, even if there's um, some fabric that you've used that you have left over or something, mm -hmm. you could bring it in and match the threads for the canvas. Yeah. And um, I mean, and it's that, you know, that's not going to work every time because, like I said, oftentimes people just stitch what they like. Mm -hmm. um, they stitch, they, they finish the piece for the. Well, and nobody's um, going to fault you for putting this piece in your room because you like it and you stitched it in the colors that the canvas designer decided was was correct then we'll finish it and make it look beautiful and i don't care what color couch you put it on it's going to be a fun addition to the room that's right that's exactly right so so i don't know have we covered all things pillow well oh i know probably one thing we not didn't mention. But... and oh <laughs> before we got here i said teddy guess what sample we don't have and he said, oh, gosh. oh a boxed pillow. A boxed pillow. So boxed pillows have been a really um, popular finish these days. And we, we joke, oh, no, another boxed pillow. Because um, we don't have a boxed pillow. That just means it has a gusset um, mm -hmm. going all the way around. It's like a cushion. Um, but for a finisher, for a pillow finisher, the boxed pillow is kind of like the double pillow. Because he's right. got to do two separate sets of welting. Mm -hmm. He's got to And do God forbid it's plaid or a stripe. Because then the stitch lines have to be absolutely meticulous and you know box pillows are nice and they're great in some mm -hmm. places but we, we just laugh every time we get a box pillow I'm like oh man teddy here comes another one they're gonna be pricey they're, yeah. <laughs> well the truth is 
it is a little more it of an takes expensive longer finish. and it's a more expensive finish there's more fabric and mm -hmm. there's more labor involved in it mm -hmm. um and so it, it, it is actually a more expensive yeah. but yeah exactly so anyway um we hope that this has given you some insight into planning for a pillow finish um teddy is like i said on instagram and also um so follow him because he's also a, a, I, I don't know how the stars align align and i found such a talented person who's also a needle pointer and can finish pillows for me so it, it is awesome but um we thank you for your time and we hope that we've spoken for all of the pillow finishers out there and use the language that everybody's using because of course this is meant to be a resource um and uh yeah, so if you have any other questions, we'd be happy to kind of watch the comments on, on mm -hmm. the on the feed and um, we'll happy part to two. address them. <laughs> we can always do part two, you know, there's always that. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so thank you, Teddy. We thank This you. has been awesome information. Mm -hmm. And um, like we always say, be sure to hit subscribe if you have not already done that on the YouTube um, uh, tab at the top there, subscribe. That helps us get the word out and um, bring more people like Teddy into the mix and, and get more information out there. So thanks a lot, everybody. Thank you. Have a great day. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. And I got to lean in here because um, the screen is over here and I'm going to hit the record. Bye-bye.